the notion that you don't have to test everything right away you know essentially it's like test as you need to change things yeah and um you know the way that things happen in systems you know it's like some areas will never touch again and other areas you're going to touch over and over again and yeah you know the latter tests and you know you don't have to be upset that you only have like 52 percent coverage in your system it may be that way in two years also it might be more up to 60 yeah but number isn't the goal you know it's just getting coverage for what you needed to do you know? yeah yeah and, and and as you I, I, as you say you know doing that tactically in the parts of the system that matter to you at the time when you're working you you make, yeah. make the bits where you're working habitable yeah totally habitable i love that word for that yeah yeah, yeah. But another of those quote, quotes that I picked up in, in, in my research on the, I'm going to throw back at you, is, is that <laughs> um, uh, object orientation, when it's done right, looks a lot like functional programming. But there, there's a contentious uh, thing to say these days. It is, yeah. But I think it's, um, and I, I don't mean it quite literally, but really more like in its effect in a way. Yeah. Um, no pun intended, because, you know, there's a side effect issue with functional programming and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, it's when you when you look at like um, a system that you're trying to go and get tests around and, and object orientation, for instance, one of the basic maneuvers is essentially like dependency injection, right? Or, yeah. you know, I think the, the the very simple way of looking at this, even if you're not using a dependency injection framework, is parameterize the constructor, just passing all the dependencies through the constructor, right? Yeah. And typically these dependencies are things that do IO or interact with other parts of the system and stuff like that. So you can look at, you know, the entire object is being a thing which is parameterized. And basically it should be pure computation in yeah. the sense that it goes and grabs things from the, you know, the inputs, maybe writes things to the input objects and stuff like that. But it's kind of like, it's very clear what the inputs and outputs are to that piece. And it's that aspect of functional programming that's, that, that I see mirrored in good OO in a way. It's yeah. like that you get a degree of locality where you know what's going in and you know what's coming out because it's explicit in interfaces. Yes. And, you know, functions are that same thing to an extreme. But yes. good OO tends to align in that direction, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, and, and I think that the synergy of OO design and test-driven development, test-driven development tends to push you in that direct, the direction of that kind of design as well. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I vaguely remember us having a conversation a long time ago about, mm -hmm. um, about the... The kind of surface area of the system and 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 the yeah. testability you know that, that's imposed on you by testability one one of the criticisms that i see from time to time is you know um is is that the test driven development can have a, an a put impact to make your designs worse by breaking decomposing the system into lots of tiny pieces and yeah. i remember you saying at the time and reassuring me in my, my opinion which was Actually, that's just the surface area of the problem that you're seeing there, that, that the test-driven development yeah. kind of shines a light on or, or words mm -hmm. to that effect. Um, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it seems sim this seems similar to me in, in, in that light. It tends to push you in the way of doing OO better as well. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, it's it's a, an interesting thing with this too, because I think one of the things I've really come back to an awful lot recently, I was really impressed by a talk I saw by Ian Cooper. Do you know him at all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, 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 I've seen some of his talks. I don't know him personally. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like uh, he was going and um, he was talking about that that tension between basically like you're testing a whole chunk of a system, which is more integration-y versus yeah. like every single class gets its tests and stuff like that. Um, and it made me think that a lot of times when I'm doing TDD, quite often I start with something and I write tests against it and it kind of ends up becoming a facade because I start extracting yeah. pieces out, which is... You know, it's a bit different from what like Steve Freeman and Nat Price would do in growing object-oriented um, systems using tests. Yeah. Um, because I don't know, but I, I think I lean more in this direction now of kind of like you're growing out from a facade and in a way. Um, but I go back and forth. It's really kind of hard. I think we've had a debate within the industry for quite a while about, you know, are you testing each piece individually and then knitting them together? Or are you basically growing, basically testing something that you're going to grow outward? Mm -hmm. I know in the legacy code situation, the latter tends to happen quite often. You'll find a, a God class and you're trying to make changes to it and you write some tests against the facade of it. And then you're kind of like, well, gee, I've got enough coverage now to go and extract out pieces. And you do that and then you still have this kind of hierarchical structure that way, but it's okay because it's understandable and 
you've got test coverage and you can march forward. Um, yeah. yeah. Of course, I was a little bit rambly, but um, no, I think no. there's forces at play with that in a way. You know, are you yeah, making, are you, yeah. I, 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 get, or are you kind of like growing? You know, yeah. I, 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 I think, I think it, it goes back to what you were saying earlier about the, you know, the, the, the limitations of the human mind. You know, you, you, you don't always know the, the right way forward, and so you're, you're exploring. You, you, you are, you're in learning mode. You're discovering new things, and one of, the, and, and one of the ways of doing that is just don't, jumping different levels of abstraction. So you, you want to sometimes you want to jump up and get that kind of you know, broader picture of how yeah. do these pieces hang together oh yeah well, now i see it and now i'm going to go down and i'm going to look at this detail i'm going to test this little piece mm -hmm. yeah definitely mm -hmm. yeah, there's i think like another related thought around that is um the thing about modularity an awful lot over the years and you know when we get back to that thing about testing pain and it pointed to design problems yeah it made me think back to the thing that we've always had about like how do we name the testing that we do and it's like it seemed like people would say hey unit test isn't really a good name for this yeah and let's call them programmer tests or let's call them micro tests or yeah all these other things and you know i, I felt like it might be an interesting thing to flip around and say well we could call them unit tests and then people would say what's the unit and i'd say well it's the thing that you can test easy in a yeah. way it's like if if you have a chunk that's this big and you can test it easy because it has minimal um, coupling to other pieces, then that's yes. the unit that you test it. Doesn't matter if it's like three or four classes working together, but it ends up being this cohesive chunk that you can actually work with. If it gets to be 10 or 15 classes and you can't effectively test it because, you know, like the distance between your inputs and outputs and what's really going on is so far yeah. that that's not understandable, probably not a good unit. So it, I think that thing of going and help helping having tests basically help us see where the modularity currently exists in the system and then how we can actually sort of fiddle with it to go and make it better is like uh yeah improve on it I, I, and one of the driving principles for that that, that i use often and yeah. i know you talk about as well I, I think maybe we use different terminology but separation of concerns you know yeah just striving to make sure that each part of the code is doing one thing and again you know that that idea of um, uh, the testability of the system helps us to see those opportunities. I, 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 I think that was an aspect of the way that I applied and thought about design anyway. But I worked for a few yeah. years alongside Martin Thompson, who I think I think mm -hmm. you know as well. Yeah, yeah, he, he's a good a good friend of mine, and mm -hmm. Martin's a great programmer. But he has a laser focus on separation of concerns. Immediately, he spots mm -hmm. the slightest hint that any piece of code is doing more than one thing he's ripping it apart and he's just trying to figure out how to get that you know that, that thing out and somewhere else and oh, his right. code yeah. his, his code is just really nice to to work on as a result because each piece you can just you can see exactly what it's doing and you know it's, it's all there in front of you and mm -hmm. it's clear and it's testable um but it's small and, and it talks to, you know it may talk to to another piece somewhere and that's clear and easy to understand but then you've got mm -hmm. to have that ability to kind of synthesize the picture a little bit which i can kind of see the criticism of the surface area but that 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 it does make each piece easy to work on and it does make each each one easy to understand and yeah you know, and and it, what's wild is like when you have like really extreme separation of concerns like that it's almost like every object becomes a lever in a way yeah. It's like you want to change how this operates, tweak this one lever. And it's really obvious that this is the lever because that's the place where it resides and it's doing nothing else. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that's, you know, a powerful thing. There, there was a, I had a really weird experience early on. Like I remember trying to learn and I looked at something called the hot draw framework that was kind of like, I believe it was Ken Hour and Kent Beck working on this. And I think Ralph Johnson was involved in one of the early design patterns guys. Mm -hmm. I remember looking at this code, I had nobody to explain it to me. And it was like all these little objects. I'm kind of like, how does this all fit together? I tried making CRC cards to go and look at how this, all this stuff was. And then I remember reading someplace, I forget where it was. It's kind of like when you, when you factor at a very fine grain in a system, it might be a little bit harder to find where you need to make the change. But once you make, the, once you find that place, it's easy. Yes. So you're going, you're trading off there's a little bit of extra discovery cost sometimes yes. for where something resides, but then it's kind of like the modularity gives you the affordance to be able to go and really tweak things yeah. the way you 
So and it's, it's kind of interesting to write, but it's tough for developers quite often because they're kind of like, I can't understand everything. It's all, it's all over yeah. the place. And, yeah. you know, it's part of the learning curve, I think, you know. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Bye. Bye.